Yes, it was, it was rough. It's mm -hmm. a psychologically tough uh, job. It's not for everyone. And I remember our boss, a gentleman, at some point he came about a year in. He was the executive vice president of a global company. What? And uh, Mr. Goudreau, I think at the time he was about 43 or 45, 43, 45 years old. I was 30. Um, this guy earned about $90,000, $93,000 a week. A week? A week. And he got paid weekly. How? He earned a commission from every, every sales sale. guy's commission. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, Houston, Texas had two offices at the time. I was in one. My office alone had 50 sales guys. Mm. Each sales guy had to do $300 of sales a day. Mm, 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 mm. 300 times 50, $15,000. One office. One day. One day. So two offices, that's $30,000. US alone had 2,000 offices <laughs> across the 50 states. Uh, not to mention Canada, uh, South America, parts of Europe. Uh, the only place they were not in was Africa. Mm. They tried Nigeria, but couldn't deal with the corruption there. Uh, and I think that at some point they were even in Japan. Mm. So you can imagine tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people making sales a day and you get a piece of whatever they sell. Mm -hmm. Whether or not he got out of bed, it was guaranteed. Because he was in the company's first sales crew ever. Mm. And he and the founder, Larry, a, gent uh, uh, a Jewish gentleman, uh, I forget his last name, uh, had a very strong bond and I, I think he became a, an owner of the business. Mm. And as executive vice president, he was guaranteed a portion of everyone's sales on a daily basis. So this guy had no reason whatsoever to come to work, practically speaking, but he was the first guy in the office and the last one out. What? Yeah. So. We used to see guys like those and, and be motivated because the guy has $93,000 coming in every week, whether or not he comes to the office, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, uh, and this is something you would tell us periodically, just to kick, uh, kick our teeth in. Uh, he lived in Malibu. His next door neighbor was uh, John Travolta, apparently. <laughs> he says he paid cash for the house years before. Uh, four, four and a half million dollars, I think, he paid cash. He had $10 million in his current account. And every so often he would bring his ATM uh, balance sheet to the office. And just slam it on Just to prove to you guys he wasn't lying. And this is a high school dropout. Ooh. Yeah, so it, 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 was, it was extremely motivating to work around and under people like those. Mm. But it was tough psychologically. If I was going to say that it, a guy like that is a, he, he he's excellent at what he does, but he's also a type A personality. The words oh that leave God. his mouth can destroy oh you. Oh my God! Yeah, I watched I watched girls especially come to the office on their first day. Uh, three minutes in the office with him, they walk out crying and never come back. He was a rough guy to deal with. I'm sure he was rough on you. How did you how did you manage? Hey man, God's grace. Uh, I knew I was there for a purpose. Uh -huh. So I was able to stomach it because in my mind I was like, okay, if God wants me to be here and he knew that Mr. Goudreau is coming, he must not care about Mr. Goudreau's personality. Uh -huh. So you eat, eat the lessons <laughs> and you move on. <laughs> and I think that's one, of the, that's one of the best lessons I ever learned as a Christian because, you know, in the Christianity I grew up in, Maybe it's not the same for everyone, but the Christianity I was taught about, everything was painted as though it was meant to be rosy mm. and polite. And, 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 and move away from and people virtuous, who are... virtuous. Yes. Avoid people who curse. Yep. Because they're polluting your, your mm. mind. Uh, any moment there's resistance, then it's, it's the not devil God's working. Will, yeah. it's, it's, it can't be God's will if there's resistance. I, I learned through that process that the truth is far from that. It's... In fact, those are the places God wants to send you immediately because you are the light mm. needed in that situation. And even throughout history, you know, some of the people God used the most uh, profoundly were the most heathen guys on the planet. Mm. Look at King Darius, mm. Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, there Paul. Was 
yeah, there, were, there was something about these people that God could work with. Mm. And I think that that boils down to intent, number one, because people can be mean and horrible, but not maliciously. Mm. They're just tough people. Yeah. And yep. they, they hit you square in the middle of your eyes with the truth. Yeah. They don't care how it <laughs> makes you feel. Yeah. It's the truth. Deal with it and move on. Right. Mm. And people read that all sorts of ways. But there's, there's, a, there's a beauty about that. Uh, and, and for me, working under Paul Goudreau uh, in Houston, Texas, was super beneficial because I learned a lot from him about mental, mental toughness no excuses you make it happen if you didn't meet your quota by friday you work saturday and sunday which i had to do a couple of times mm. uh, I'd, I'd work all saturday in the neighborhood near me and sometimes on sundays after church yeah. just so on monday i can say i met my quota for last week so work ethic uh how to deal with human beings, reading the human psychology were all priceless lessons I learned through those two years. You, you talked about one racist, one, ra one act of racism that you, that you yeah. experienced. Yeah, so it's a neighborhood I was working in. I think it was a Saturday. Uh, it was a corner property. I remember I went around the corner and, and you know, they even trained you on how to knock on the door because Texas is a, is a carry state, meaning everyone's parking. Mm. everyone and their show show and if you don't handle yourself right you could get shot for for no reason right if if you if even in terms of your body language mm. your proximity to the the front door so one of the things i was taught is you go knock on the door or ring the doorbell and take five paces back what the last thing you want is someone to open the door and your face is here oh it's already attack yeah and in in some parts of the states they are allowed to kill you in self-defense yeah so there's protocol to your physical engagement uh, in in some states more than others mm. so I remember doing exactly this as I was trained I was a good student I rang the doorbell I took five uh, paces back this older gentleman he was probably 70s a little shorter than I opened the door and he came walking at me at like 50 kilometers an hour screaming the most offensive profanities out of his mouth uh, about the color of my skin, you bleeping, bleeping, bleep, nigger. Mm. How dare you knock on my door? Get out of my neighborhood, leave now. Just throwing a massive tantrum. Neighbors started walking out to find out what's getting this old guy so upset. And uh, thankfully I had, I had gone through enough situations and training that I need to just back away with a smile on my face still and apologize and wish him a good day and I moved on to the next house. What? Yeah, in fact... Were you it, scared? I can't say I was scared. I was startled. I was surprised because that was the first time mm. anyone had ever used racial slurs ever in the States. Ever. Towards you? Yeah. So I was, I, was, I was a bit taken aback by that. Uh, first of all, the gentleman doesn't know me. Why would he say such things about me? I just figured the guy was having a bad day. I was just the first guy in line mm. uh, for him to unleash on. I happened to be black. What? Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Yeah. So he just moved on. The neighbors, the neighbors. Yeah, so actually you make it a conversation piece on so the next guy. It's a great icebreaker. You knock on the door, it's take five steps, guy opens, like, hey, wasn't that you upsetting Mr. Sir? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what I did wrong. He was so upset. I, I hope he's okay. Do you know him? Yeah, I know him. I've lived with him, next to him for years. Great. Next time you have a chat with him, please apologize uh, on my behalf. Uh, and my name is Solomon, <laughs> by the way. I'm doing some work in your neighborhood for Smart Soko. We're celebrating our 10th anniversary, blah, blah, blah. Before you know it, I've made a sale. <laughs> so, you know, uh, everything always worked in your favor. If you have a good attitude, mm. it, it can work in your favor. But that's so quick for you to be able to, to see this negativity as an opportunity for? Honestly, anything, anything that 
sparks an exchange of words between you and another human being is the door is the only door you need oh okay yeah <laughs> so love man i feel like we can have a conversation on this this is a lesson on its own like the amount of sales lessons that it's okay i'll send you my invoice <laughs> <laughs> send the guys watching <laughs> so yeah. so can you just one more before we close this chapter can you remember a day when you were like the commissions i did today Woo-hoo! i do yeah uh we'd been sent out to new orleans mm. after hurricane katrina had done its thing uh the city of new orleans was reeling uh economically because half the population literally had left mm. had lost homes and left to other states so the basketball team there the new orleans hornets were having very poor home game attendance mm. and it was beginning to affect the team's psyche and they were losing more home games than they ought to so the but the it's company, not the Charlotte Hornets no no then they they you know they they moved to new orleans oh, okay yeah or they left new orleans to uh, Charlotte. Charlotte okay yeah uh, one of the two they they were in new orleans at the time okay. this was in 2000 2008 okay um and um i remember our, our, our office our home office made a deal with the team to do discount coupon cards to encourage locals to come to more games mm. so they were selling the the coupons i think it was 300 350 worth of 390 worth of coupons for 39 bucks mm. or 36 dollars 35.99 there, there was always like one cent less mm. And, and that's against psychology. Huge, yeah. To make to make the footy look like it's a 39. Yes, yeah. 39 feels more like 30 than it does footy. Like 40. <laughs> uh but I remember uh, I was assigned a particular part of downtown with two other guys. And we walked into this tall skyscraper. It's probably the tallest tower in New Orleans. And I remember looking at the lift there were three rows of buttons. That's how many floors Ooh. there. Are. So we're trying to divvy up this building because we don't want to cross each other mm. while we're working the territory because you can imagine if you disturb an office twice selling the same thing. Yeah. They call security on you and you're all bounced. You know so we we were divvying up the floors. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't want any strife about this. So you guys pick your floors, I'll do the one that's left. So they did their you know they're doing their mental mathematics on what they think would be yeah. the juiciest <laughs> floors right? uh so they pick theirs at, and I started at the top of mine so you start at the top coming down because in case you get kicked out you can always come down five floors and keep working the floors down mm. but if they kick you out from down you can't Ooh. go back up you know what i mean so there was a hey, science dude, you were a sales guy <laughs> yeah there was a science there was a you method a sales to guy what even <laughs> Even, yeah even the routes <laughs> no you had to you had to because you had to maximize your time in the field you only have six hours to speak to a hundred people mm-hmm. and convince ten of them to make an impulse purchase Ooh. yeah so you had to be boom 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 so I remember walking into this uh, uh I stepped out of the elevator it was a uh, top floor sorry second second it was a second uh, floor from the top mm. but it the same company it was a law firm had the f- the top three floors mm. so i knew one of my colleagues was in the other two floors right so i walk in and the receptionist there was a very polite african american lady uh, she listened to me patiently i did my sales speech when i hammered her with the clothes she was like ah i'm sorry we don't we don't need the tickets you know our bosses here uh, have paid for the the private vip cabins you know uh, we get to use them for free so we don't need tickets so like oh okay anyone else in in the office could use them for friends family gifts and she's like hmm yeah come with me so she walks me upstairs to another guy's floor right except that guy for whatever reason chose to skip i think he got intimidated mm. when he went up there cuz i was mm. so this lady takes me up there we used the stairs and the landing was all marble floor to ceiling and the wall was like 30 foot tall like it was high marble and it was you know one of those law firms in london new yep, york yep. los angeles paris i was like what the 
crap is going on here? Um, I mean, very imposing. And, and she walks me to the receptionist, her colleague, and she says, hey, Mary, uh, this nice young gentleman's name is Solomon. He's selling some, some tickets. I'll let, I'll let him pitch you. So she bounces. So this lady looks at me dead in the face and like, okay, what, what do you want? What do you got to say? Yeah, so I pitch her. First thing out of her mouth was, you speak very good English. Where are you from? Like, I'm from Kenya. We, we speak the Queen's English. <laughs> and, and, you know, that, that became the icebreaker. icebreaker. Yeah. And so she told me exactly the same thing her colleague said. We don't need because our bosses let us use their, their VIP uh, seats, uh, season tickets. So uh, let me call the office manager. She calls the office manager, very nice white lady. Uh, she takes me to the conference room, had like 30 seats on either side, you know, those long conference tables overlooking the entire city of New Orleans. I was on the literally the highest floor in New Orleans. Mm. I was trembling. I was like, I can't screw this up. I have to act right, because these are the sorts of guys who call the cops mm. to kick you out of the building. So I, I made my pitch and she's like, oh, that was a really good pitch. I'll take one. I was like, great. Um, how would you like to pay? We take cash, check, debit, credit, gold teeth, car keys. <laughs> uh, so she laughs and she, she goes to, let me go get my credit card. And I'll check in the back and see if anyone else wants some. So I'm sitting there waiting for her to come back. The lady comes back with like 70 dudes in suits. What? She makes them all sit at the conference table. She's like, well, I guess more people wanted them than I expected. So go ahead and pitch. So I'm, I'm standing in front of this long country. <laughs> Everyone's white, stone face. You know, these are lawyers, yeah. right? So they can smell your BS from yeah. 10 miles away. So I did my sales pitch uh, and I told them, I only have 50 of these. I'm not sure if I'll get sent back to the same territory. So buy as many as you can today. We take cash check, debit credit, car keys, gold teeth, jewelry. <laughs> Um, everyone stood up, give me three, give me two. I sold all mine. I called my guys in the, on the other floors yeah. to bring me their, their stock. I sold all theirs. Poo. That was, I think I did a hundred sales on that day. <laughs> I, I did, I did, I did, uh, I did 10 days worth of, of sales in, in less than an hour. Oh, I didn't even work the rest of my floors. Yeah. Yeah, so I called my supervisor. I was like, uh, Oliver, I need more. I need more cards. Can you can you bring them over? It's like, what? You sold out? It's like, yeah. Get some from your buddies. Like, I sold theirs too. Like, what? Uh, no, man, I can't give you any more because we're supposed to be here for a week. If I give you more, we'll have to go back to the office earlier. And none of us want to go back to Houston earlier. So you just have to wait until tomorrow. You can sell your next 35. So I literally spent the rest of the day eating a giant burger <laughs> at the W Hotel. <laughs> Your pals uh, must have been happy as well. Oh <laughs> man, I was so, I had this buzz going on the whole day. So next day, same thing. I went back to the same building. I sold out in less than half an hour. What? I worked that building all week. Ooh. I never made so much money. In my, I mean, I paid, I paid my rent, all my bills on the second day for the next three months. <laughs> And, you know, I was like, what else am I supposed to do? What is life? <laughs> yeah. But that, that was an amazing and gratifying experience. Nice. I mean, your boss must have been. And was there a report like employee of the month? Yeah, yeah. I was in the top, te uh, I was one of the top four salesmen in the country for that month. What? Yeah. So every month they would list, they would publish a magazine mm -hmm. that was circulated uh, globally. And does that come with commissions? No, what they did is they, the, so your office manager might offer a bonus, mm. but that was up to them. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't given a bonus that time. I made so much money, the bonus would have been silly. Uh, it's, it's usually a, a nominal amount. Mm. Uh, but what they do is they give you better opportunities to train others and build a team. Okay. Because you obviously know Or now you, be, you, become, you become, you become a trainer. And now you earn commissions on their sales. Eventually, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, if you train them well and hit certain targets, they set up a new office and send you to manage that office. Oh, I get it. And you get uh, a portion of that office's sales forever. 
Okay. So yeah. why on earth do you quit? <laughs> uh my fiance at that time uh decided to come back home <laughs> <laughs> okay we are coming back yeah, <laughs> let's, so. let's take a two minute break we are coming back to this conversation <laughs>